Today we will be looking at how we can make the enemy uh, that we've created in the town map movement tutorial, how we can make him follow the player and then also have multiple enemies follow the player without overlapping each other or blocking each other by, uh, by using the A-star grid, the town map and also um, groups. So let's dive right in. Okay, so all I've done here is I've opened the project from the previous tutorial uh, for tile map movement and I've changed nothing yet. Um, we're going to have to use this project as a starting point, so make sure you check that one out. All right, uh, first things first, we're going to have to get a script on the enemy. Call it enemy. And then within this enemy, in the ready function, we're going to be defining the A star grid like we did before. And we're going to be referencing it in different functions, so just make a uh, variable for it. And we're going to say A star grid, just like the previous tutorial. We're going to be using the tile map in order to determine what the size of this grid will be. So we're going to be setting the region, and that's equal to tile map dot get use tracked. We're also going to set the cell size. That's going to be a new vector too, 16 by 16, because we use a 16 by 16 pixel art grid. And then we're also going to set the diagonal mode to diagonal mode never. We don't want to move the enemy uh, diagonally. We, all, we only want to move it up or down or left or right. Then we have to update this object in order for these changes to apply. And we're going to be extracting the region size from the ASR grid. Uh, dot region dot size. And we're going to do the same with the region position. Just to keep things a little cleaner than the previous tutorial with the ASR grid. So now we're going to be looping over the region size of the A star grid object and then we're going to see which tiles are set to non-walkable and then set these points solid for this grid in order for the pathfinding not to use these tiles. So we're going to loop over the region size x value and then we're also going to loop over the y value. We're going to get the tile position, which is going to be a vector to y. And we can just copy this for the y in order to get the offset right. Touch the tile data. Get cell tile data. Uh, layer zero, we didn't change anything, and then we have to apply the position of the tile. And then we're gonna check if it's walkable. So if it's if data is not null or is null, that means that there is not a tile. Or if tile data data dot uh, what is it uh, get system data walkable? That's the name of our layer. I think it's lowercase w. Um, and we're going to have to check if it's not there, because if it is there, then we're going to walk on it. And then we're going to tell the ASR grid that this tile position needs to be set to solid. So if there's no tile, or if we don't have walkable on it, then we shouldn't do that. This is tile data, tile data. Oh, my bad. Should be good now. Okay. So now that we've set up the ASTAR grid, we're going to start looking into uh, how we're actually going to move the enemy. In order to actually start moving the enemy, we're going to do a couple of things. And mainly we're going to, in the process function, check if we're already moving, which we're going to do by using a flag. If we are moving, 
we don't want to do anything. And if we're not moving, then we're actually going to call a function move. And we're going to write that function now. And what we will do here is we're actually going to get a path from the A star grid. So we're going to call this object that we can get the path from. And it needs a couple of things. So it needs the from vector 2i and the to vector 2i. And what we will do now uh, is we're actually going to use the tile map to convert the vector 2s of the global position of this object and also the global, pos uh, the global position of the player. And we're going to convert these to vector 2i's using the tile map .local to map function. And the first variable of this function, well, of, of the getID path was going to be our position, and that's the position of the enemy, so it's going to be global position. And then the second variable is actually the player of the uh, the position of the player. And let's just drag that in for now. So we can just say player that global position because that's where we want to go. Uh, so now that we have a path, uh, it returns us. Uh, an array of vector 2i's which corresponds to positions on the tile map and it the first item of this array is always going to be the current position and we don't want to move to the current position so let's just uh, pop that out of the path array so we're going to say pop front and that removes the first item and then we're going to take a look at if we actually have a path because path could be empty that means that there is either well i think it always means that there is no way to get to where you want to go. And if that is the case, then we're just going to uh, print can't find path. And we're going to return this function. We don't want to do anything else. All right. Then we're going to do the same thing we did for the player. So we're going to set the original position of this, um, I think this is already, of this um, enemy. Little position here is already a uh, vector two, I think. But we don't want to do this because I think we reference the actual global position and we want to make like a momentary snapshot of the global position of this object. Then we're going to set the global position of the enemy to the first item of our path array. And that is a vector two i, so we need to convert it to a vector two doing map to local, path, and then the first item. We're going to move the sprite back like we did in the previous tutorial. So sprite to the global position, and we, I think we still need the reference to the sprite. So we're going to get that in here. Uh, that is actually going to be the original position. And then we're going to set is moving to true, because we have a path, we check that. We, we actually have a path after we pop the front and it's not empty, so then we're gonna say is moving is true. And now in the physics process function, we will start moving the sprite when is moving is true, and we're gonna move it to the global position of this object. So if we're moving the sprite to the global position, is sprite to the dot global position dot move toward and then we want to move towards this position of the enemy object because we just set that one to the new to the path the, the first item in the path and then we're going to have a move speed let's do uh, one for now okay and then in this physics process we're also going to check that when we moved did we arrive at the position that we wanted to move toward? And if that's the case, so if sprite to the global position is not global position, that means that the sprite is not on the exact same, this node is not in the same position as this node, then we're going to return. And if we are at the same position, it's moving, it's going to be false which means that in the next iteration or the next frame, we're not going to get returned. We're going to call move again. We're going to determine a new path, and then we're going to start moving towards that path. So every time we finish moving to the first item of this array, 
we're basically going to get a new path. That means that if the player moved mean in the meanwhile, we actually update the path to follow the player. Let's uh, see what it does. Yeah, so. Okay, there's a couple of things going wrong. Um, first of all, the ghost now actually gets onto our position. And second of all, um, we don't we, we want to detect when the ghost is close to you in order to stop him from moving. And I think we can solve both issues by checking if path.size, so the, the array of vector two eyes is exactly has exactly the size of one. Uh, it's going to be I have arrived at my target, so he is close to us, and then we're going to return. We're not going to move. And now when the ghost is close, he should stop moving into us. Yeah, so right now we pop the front, so he has the, the, the error size of the path is one. He sees that, so he doesn't move onto us. And now we can actually, if we make him slower, and we move him away a little bit. Oh. I don't want to do that. Wait. There we go. Like over here. He will now start following us. And I have enabled the visibility of the collision so you can see where the actual enemy object is and where the sprite is going. So right now he's following us. Okay, pretty good. Um, so let's make this into its own scene, like this. And let's uh, duplicate him, because we're going to have multiple enemies. And we can see that they are still colliding with each other. They're going to merge into each other. And we want to stop that. So let's uh, see how I uh, make it so that doesn't happen. Every time that the ghost wants to move, it makes a new path towards the player. And it keeps in mind all of these solid tile maps that we've set. And what we will be adding is that when the ghost wants to move, he's going to fetch the positions of all the other ghost objects and mark them as solid, get a path, and then unsolid these ghost positions so that the static solid tiles, which are the tile map because they don't change, remain the same. But we only temporarily set the enemy positions to uh, to point solid in order to have the enemy not walk over each other. So we're going to be going into the enemy script. Well, first of all, we need a way to grab all the enemies. And I like to do that by using groups. So go into your enemy scene. And let's add into the enemies group. I always use plurals for groups so that we can say for enemy and enemies. All right, save that. Go back to the script. And we want to fetch all of the positions of the already existing ghosts. And we're going to do that by getting all of the enemies in the enemies group. Get notes in group or something. Yeah. Enemies. So now all of the ghosts are in there, including himself. And that's something you keep in mind. Because once we start iterating over all of the items in this group, we don't want to block our own position, but we're going to get to that shortly. We're going to make a empty array called occupied positions, which is going to house all of the positions that we want to block so that we can block them and then unblock them from the same array. And we start by looping over the enemies. If the current enemy that we're looping over is ourselves, which can be the case, continue and do the next iteration of this for loop. If this is not the case, we're going to append the position of that enemy to our occupied positions array. And this is going to be an array of vector two i's. And in order to convert the enemy position to a vector two i, we still need to use the tile map functionality, which is called local to map, because we want to convert a vector two to vector two i. And that's going to be the enemy's global position and the enemy being the enemy that we're looping over. So now we have an array filled with positions. And here is where we actually get the path for the enemy 
instance. And before we do that, we need to uh, actually block these enemies, their global position. So for occupied position in occupied positions, we're going to tell the A star grid that it has to set a point solid. Uh, ID is going to be, well, that's the vector 2i, so that's going to be occupied position. And then solid boolean is true by default, so we don't need a second argument here. It's just going to set it solid. Then we get a path. And after we get that path, we still have to clear these occupied positions in order for the next iteration of this function to have like a clean start, a clean slate, because enemies move around as well. We need to constantly, when we want to move, we need to fetch their current position in order to be up to date. And we also don't want these points to stay solid because that's going to result in very weird movement, which we don't want. So we're basically going to do the same. And then we're going to add this second variable, which means that we're freeing the position of the um, enemy that we just set solid. So here we're setting them solid, get the map with the solid points of the enemies, and then free them again. And I think um, they shouldn't be colliding anymore. They're all added to enemy here. Yeah. So now if we move around, you can see that they are not going over each other, and they're also moving around each other. And if we make uh, different speed enemies, we can even see it more easily. So let's uh, do that real quick. Let's export a variable. Uh, let's say 0 0.5. Okay, that's going to be default. And let's make this 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Let's see what happens. Oh, we don't even use the variable yet. My bad. Uh, move speed, move speed, move speed there. There we go. See, the, the one on the top is faster than the rest. He's trying to get around. And you can see that we have some enemies that are starting to log that they arrive at our position. And we should also see a log when we get boxed in. Yeah, so we see one of the enemies is saying I can't find a path because we don't allow diagonal movement and it can't touch us if it's over here because we uh, it, it wants to be on top of us. So that's why this enemy is going to go into this flow of the code because it cannot find a path. Therefore, the path array is empty. So that's how we uh, fix that. And I think that's it. This is how you can create following enemies on a grid map. I really like uh, doing it this way because I'm a, a big fan of the A star grid object. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.